Ryan McCaffrey at IGN. Welcome to another episode of IGN Unfiltered, my monthly interview series where I have the pleasure of sitting down with the best, brightest, most interesting minds in the games industry. Uh, today I'm here on site in Richardson, Texas at id Software. We're taking a look all month long as part of IGN First at Doom Eternal, which is out on March 20th on uh, PC, Stadia, PS4, Xbox One, and then Switch version later, if I have all that correct. And with me, the director of the project, Hugo Martin. Hello. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for inviting us in. And Marty Stratton, executive producer. Yes. Great to see you guys. Uh, it's been fun. We've been we've been playing a lot of Doom while we're here. Uh, awesome which to is, have you. Which has been a good couple days for me. Uh, Hugo, you're I, something interesting I learned about you, if I have this correct, that your first Doom that you played was Doom 64. Yeah, the, the one that, 64. I, that yeah. I owned. Yeah. I had played Doom prior to that uh, in the dorms on other people's PCs, but uh, I didn't have a PC uh, at that time. I was a Mac user. And um, uh, so uh, when Doom 64 came out, uh, that was the first time I had a chance to dive in for several hours at a time into a Doom game. And what, uh, so I actually, I, I haven't played 64 yet. When you guys re-release it here coming up, that's gonna be my first time checking it out, which I'm eager to see, because it's it's held in pretty well high regard amongst the you know Doom community at large. But you know, I, I was all I was actually all PC. I I hoodwinked my parents into finally getting us <laughs> our first family PC, largely so that I could play Doom. Thank God, because it's that, that game was that's like my Desert Island game. But um, so what what was it about 64 that that really you know got its hooks into you? Uh, so I think you have to give credit to the original because it invented uh, you know the Doom games. It was the first one, so it, it'll always have a special place as you know arguably the best Doom game. I genuinely think Doom 64 is my favorite. You know, um, having played them all and especially we replay them all of us at the beginning of development, always, I think. We, I'm always curious about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, probably once, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly revisiting all of them, you know, just to spot check and, and play it again, make yeah. sure you, you you keep your finger on the pulse of, of what really makes a good Doom game. Um, so they're all very familiar to everyone on the team. And I just like the, the atmosphere of Doom 64. I think it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more moody, obviously, it's a little a few years later. They they were able to do a few more things. I think the honestly the the art uh, that went into it is, yeah. is really memorable. The the game constantly feel like uh, feels like it's messing with you, and and that was actually something that we uh, ended up uh, translated really well to Doom Eternal, where walking down a hallway in Doom sixty four. I mean, you never knew what the level was going to throw at you. <clears throat> Probably a little bit more so than the original Doom, and I think that feeling of like just barreling down a hallway without a care in the world versus knowing that the level is keeping me on my toes. <laughs> and and that that was actually something that we really wanted to get uh, into Doom Eternal. So uh, just a great game uh, overall and uh, really fond memories of playing it uh, in art school back in the day. It it's... was fun and not going to class. <laughs> <laughs> Good soundtrack too. Yeah. Marty, what uh, what's the first id game you ever played? <clears throat> what was which of their games was first before was, you joined up? It was Doom. Doom one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I, I I I didn't play it when it first came out. I was I was trying to finish. I changed my major in college kind of late and uh, had to had to go an extra semester. So I was trying to trying to get done and and uh, save <laughs> not not spend so much uh, not spend so much money. So uh, when I first moved to LA, uh, a friend of mine uh, had had Doom and played it at his house and. You know, just just like everybody was just, you, you just you you can't believe. You know, you you're like I grew up I, I grew up a lot playing um, uh, arcade games. I mean, like I love yes. uh, you know hit of the '80s, so um, arcades were the thing. And uh, you just didn't you, you kind of you know you you kind of seen stuff like that, but not not even not even close. You know, like being first person. The, the, the way the world felt it was just it was it was magical and and frankly like pretty soon after that I got I got my job at Activision and and the thing was the thing very quickly become became about deathmatch because that was the of course. every night you, you gotta know, measure yourself against absolutely. the competition you know every, every night and and it's it's funny because it, it really hasn't changed much you know every night everybody kind of shuts down and, and fires up uh, fires up deathmatch so Got, tried to get good at that quick, um, and uh, you know, and then just again, I, I pretty quickly started working on id games. So, you know, even from the very beginning of like Quake Two, uh, I was I was getting that stuff very very early, well before it came out. So it was it 
it's just been a blast to see, you know, how each game is, has been made. It's phenomenal. You know, you've, you've taken on the mantle here as the director of, of Doom Eternal now, after mm -hmm. you, know, you had also had a, a creative director role on Doom 2016, which, which brought Doom back after a long, long hiatus. Do you feel a lot of pressure doing that or apply it to yourself? Because it's, it's a tall order taking over Doom, of all things. I mean, it's, it's really a collaborative process. Like, uh, yeah, there's pressure, but I mean, we work extremely close, we always have. And uh, along with the rest of the team. So it's, it's not just me doing it by myself. So, so uh, that, that makes it really just a, the pressure. It doesn't feel like pressure. It, it, it's just fun to come to work every day, to be honest, to get to work with everyone uh, on this awesome project that's loved by so many fans. Um, I think that uh, it's motivating. I, you know, the, the people that he's describing and the work that they've done, we're sort of standing on the shoulders of giants, you know, like so it's a testament to how well the original Doom game was designed, how good those characters are, how good the, the fundamental design of the game is, that much of it still translates yeah. uh, to today and a lot of what people are writing about now uh, did actually exist in the original Doom game, like the thought behind the rocket launcher, for example, high risk, high reward, limited resources, how that makes you think, right tool for the job. That was in the original Doom game, yeah. you know? So uh, they're making our jobs easier because they did such a great job back then. Also, I think it's that we have to do the very best we can. So less pressure, more motivating because their work changed the industry so we really, really got to bring our A-game to make sure that we uphold the tradition here at it. I, I think, uh, while Marty's been here a long time, I think of myself and a lot of the devs as like the next generation Absolutely. Of, of it employees. And we have to carry on uh, that tradition of, of excellence in gaming, of, of uh, you know, passion, have, a, have the right amount of passion for our craft and, and, and give it everything we can. Um, and that's, that's all just motivating, you know? But we can't say enough um, that like, I didn't come here because I wanted to, you know, be the, sit on the mountaintop by myself. It's mostly uh, making games as a collaborative process. When I worked in film, it's more about the individual for sure. Uh, I wanted to be a part of a team again because I missed that when I worked on teams in the past, in particular places like Lure and Naughty Dog. Um, because that's really what it is, if you wanna make uh, games, you have to like working with people. Yeah. And I really do, I enjoy it so much. I think every day we work so closely uh, along, you know, the two of us are the leads and, and you wanna make sure that uh, you have a great team in place because great teams make great games. You know, no one individual will by himself carry a game to greatness. I think it's, it's a matter of a, a team working really well together. And certainly we have a role to play in that. I tell people all the time, like, the era of the rock star developer is not dead. You can have strong direction and still have ownership and uh, over what it is your task is and kick major fucking ass. And, and we do have rock stars on our team. It's, yeah. it's awesome. While still being a team, you know. So we're very proud of our culture and overall uh, all of that pressure and stuff. It's just really motivating. Yeah, it's, it's one thing I found interesting after Doom 2016 came out is, you know, the... the to me as a fan, especially with how long it had been and, and Doom 4 was in development for a long time. I'm gonna ask you about that in a second. But, you know, as a fan, like you sit here and even as someone who covers games, it's, I can't help but sort of pessimistically think, wow, it's been a while. The odds of this turning out gr good, let alone great, are, are kind of low. But, you know, you guys really are the, this new generation of id software that was by and large, raised on and influenced by Doom rather than the people that made Doom itself. Mm -hmm. And I and it's it's interesting to me how, like I, I think this this a big part of the success of Doom 2016 is that uh, it it channels the spirit and and really maintains the spirit, but while modernizing it and really bringing it yeah. into into yeah, you know a modern generation which yeah. I, like I don't know how the heck you did that <laughs> but, it, but it, it worked cooking with the same ingredients yeah I, I think you know uh, really a, a big part of good design doesn't doesn't matter what it is a car or a movie or anything 
you got to evaluate it in a 50,000 foot view and be able to distill it down to its the core elements that make it great. And that a lot of that stuff's kind of operating on a subconscious level. And I think our job and the fun part of our job is to really ask, why do they like that? The, the, the science of what makes something appealing is what makes the job of a designer and what I find to be endlessly uh, interesting. It, it's really, yeah. really compelling work. And um, once you can figure that out, like why do people like Star Wars? Why do they, why does someone look at the new Corvette C8 and just have the reaction, God, that's gorgeous. Like I can tell you for a fact that the, the work that went into that was tremendous. It, in, a, in a little bit of a way, it's, I mean, it's a bad word, but it's like manipulating the audience to give you, the, to get the, de, the, the desired response that you're after, you know, like, because most, most uh, games or, or um, they're like, you want people operating from here when they talk about your product, you know, this yeah. is where all the emotion is. And so if you understand what makes something tick, you know, it, it's that, oh my God, that is, that is just awesome. You know, like that means we really got you, you know, uh, what, regardless of whatever it is. And a lot of time was spent uh, working uh, to figure out what is the, what are the core elements of the Doom brand, not just Doom the game or one or two or three or 64, but the Doom brand as a whole, the metal element, the sense of irreverence, power, all these different things, you know, figuring out what those ingredients are. So that way, everything we do make sure that it, it utilizes those those core principles and then the fans will accept it and go along with you i think when you see brands you know and, and they struggle a little bit like some of the new star wars films a lot of the fans aren't happy is because i don't think that they're cooking with the same ingredients and the and the real fans can pick up on that and that means they won't go with you on their journey right on, on the journey that you're trying to take them on so you know i mentioned earlier that the doom 4 that was in development that ultimately that that was um that's you guys have told that story so sort of briefly i mean it was I don't know if it's fair to say it was it was a little sort of Call of Duty ish in this sort of single player cinematic yeah. kind of mo you know non player controlled moments and uh, what you know did did you kind of know that that wasn't the right fit the whole time or is it just sort of a process where you're just trying to like maybe there is something in there and you're trying to find it and then eventually you decide it's not there. It was more that I you know I think you uh, you never <laughs> you you generally try not to. To, to work on something very long that you feel like is not going to work. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I think it was it was more of that you know thinking about modern players and and how do you how do you bring doom to them? Um, and it was certainly uh, it was it was more of it was it was it wasn't take those ingredients that Hugo just just talked about. Um, it wasn't taking enough of those. It was taking demons um, and uh, you know uh, a, a bit of hell on earth. But uh, but that that was kind of where it ended. It like from a from a feel how, how yeah. it made you feel um, the heart the heart part that he talks about. Um, I think that was the thing that was was it just wasn't quite in place. And and the the thing is is like it was it was still good. Like it was a good game. Um, there were, you know, it was, it was still you know, a, a ways away from, from launching. So it had, it had a ways to go, but, uh, um, but it, it, uh, yeah, w when you kind of stepped back and, and, you know, we, we were, we were multiple teams at the time and, and then kind of regrouped around like, okay, what we, a lot of people were working on rage. Um, then we kind of like refocused attention around this and, and it just, yeah, it just kind of lacked some of those fundamental Doom things. It was more Doom in name than than really anything. Right. Um, and that was that was a it's it's a hard decision, you know. It's a to to a lot of people spend a lot of time on that. And and again, it wasn't it wasn't that it was bad. It was just not the right thing. Um, uh, and uh, it was it was awesome that uh, Bethesda supported us in in making that that shift because that it was a it was a big shift. Between the time Doom Three shipped in two thousand four. Uh, and so between then and Doom 2016, it was during that time bought by Zenimax, yep. by Bethesda, and only shipped one game in those 12 years, and yep. that was Rage 1. You had John Carmack left uh, during that time. You had the, the Doom 4 project that, that wasn't quite working. I'm just curious, was there any worry at, in that point that Bethesda might come in and just close the studio and take the IPs and... Was there ever sort of any fear of that? Um, not, I, I, I would say I 
probably felt that a little bit right right before we rebooted Doom 20, what became Doom 2016 yeah. and the 2012, 2013. Certainly through no pressure of Bethesda whatsoever. I, 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 I've said this, I, I mean, every interview, every opportunity since, uh, you know, since that time that I can't, I can't imagine a, a more supportive team than the Bethesda management team. Um, uh, all, all the way to, to, to Mr. Altman. Um, like it, it literally, uh, th- that was more the pressure that I was putting on. Like mm-hmm. I, I was looking at, you know, at us and, and like, man, we really, really, we're, we're we've gone a while. Uh, we just rebooted this game. Um, and it was more as we started, uh, doing 2016, um, to be like this, this has got to be something really special. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, it was, it was never a pressure An external pressure was always more of an internal pressure. Um, externally, we really got nothing but support. I mean, we needed to grow the team. Um, we needed to kind of adjust the, the culture of the studio a bit. Um, you know, we, we were bringing in people like Hugo and, and uh, you know, uh, Tiago, who's our rendering lead. Um, and, and that takes, that takes a lot of, a lot of work and, and a lot of support. And, uh, we got it like every step of the way we, we got it. So it was, it was always, I, I was, I would say always mostly self-imposed pressure than any type of external pressure. Yeah. And even just my own, you know, or, or anybody here, I think, you know, you, you work at id, you love working at id. It means something like it means something to release games that matter to people. And, uh, when you feel like you're not doing that. You're like, man, we gotta, we gotta turn this up and and uh, and and do something special. With Doom 2016, do you, you know, do you know pretty quickly that you're you are on the right path, or or is it even, is it somewhere during development, or is it not even until it gets into the public and people are really enjoying it? What, where in that timeline do you kind of feel like we 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 did this, we got it? It's gradual. I think, you know, you you kind of know very high level chunks like early on, like for us, you know, when we when we rebooted, it was, uh, you know, uh, movement, you know, like, you you know, you you look at Doom and you say one of those ingredients is movement and movement is key and movement, fast movement and not taking cover and not reloading guns. And like those are really, really big things that you can kind of hold on to and, and, um, and, you know, make his keywords or filters or however, you know, we, we do it all different ways. Um, I think as you get into development, as we got into development, uh, the, the questions and answers get far more granular. Um, and that was, that was through a lot of, uh, a lot of development of 2016 was just answering, is that doom? Is that doom? Is that doom? Way, way lower, you know, detail than, you know, do you reload your guns, you know? Uh, yeah. That, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, when we were that that three year process was was just question after question after question after question after question um, to really establish that foundation. And I think then when it launches, you're you're kind of like, OK, that that foundation is relatively sound, not not too many cracks in it, um, maybe a few. And, and you know, you, you try to you try to fix those or address those as you go forward. Um, but I think that's that's kind of the at a very high level, that's, that's kind of the process. And then as we, as we now get to do Doom Eternal, um, you have that foundation. You don't have to answer so many of those, uh, those small questions. You can, you can be much, uh, much more ambitious and the questions, the questions change, but you know, you have that, that great foundation. And and knowing the why is important and asking those questions, but then having, there's another whole component, um, and it's where kind of the sports analogies come in, which we both love, uh, because you have to have then. That's where the teamwork comes into yeah. play. Because we could know, okay, this is working. You know that feel that action of the player. We, we at, at ID, we've got amazing people who do amazing work, and they make these amazing individual pieces. You, you know, they make a shotgun. It feels great. Sounds you know, sound guy puts sound on it. It feels great. So pulling this trigger feels awesome. But then it's it's a matter of. Uh, through teamwork and having the kind of synergy we need, pulling all those elements together so every component of the game is connected to each other. Yeah. So you don't have a game that feels like it's a few really good ideas that never quite gel into one experience. And we've all played those games. We're like, this part of the game is great, and that part of the game is cool. Sure. But it didn't really all come together. And the very best games 
all of the components of the game are kind of seamless. The tone of the narrative, the progression systems, the abilities of the player, the world itself, the style of the level design, the lighting, the music, all of that feels like it's, it's following uh, the same script. And I think that's, that's why Doom 2016 was really successful. Like we, we didn't just do one cool feature, then stop. We constantly like looked to combine things so that way it was just as tight as possible as we often say, like art, design, technology, coming together to make a really tight experience. And that means, you know, a lot of really talented people taking the individual amazing work that they do and working together uh, to create a, a, a kind of singular experience. Based on what I've played of Doom Eternal so far, which is about the first three plus hours, like it really strikes me as a, a, a very confident game, a game that knows what it is and, and that sort of, Sounds like it took the, the, the three years of answering questions yeah. of what Doom is on 2016 allowed you to kind of get to that place where you're hitting the ground running and doing... And, and building know. that team. I mean, like, we've had, yeah. we've had such little turnover since... Uh, in, in fact, we've just grown the team on the, the foundation that we built during 2016. So when you have people... It, it was always a goal going into 2016 that, that, um, that not only did we build a great game, but we built a really sound team and a really sound culture yeah. uh, at the studio because the the holy grail is being able to do things over and over, you know, to, to be able to take um, whatever idea, whatever concepts and and make them great. Uh, and and really, like, you can only do that with, with people. So um, at the same time, we wanted to make Doom 2016 amazing and we were all in and like, you know, there was those kind of that self imposed pressure um, around the studio and everything. It was it was also like this game, it, it can't be this game is great, sacrifice everything in the process. It has to be this game is great and the team is great because we want to do it again and we want to be able to, to, to do it even better. That's the, I think that's where you see that confidence is you're seeing the confidence of leads who've been through the process once, people who've worked in the trenches together. Um, and and that, is, that, that is far more powerful than, than anything. Doom in 1993 introduces the word deathmatch into the, into the gaming lexicon. It also introduced the term Doom clone because there were a lot of followers that came uh, in the wake of Doom. So is it, for you guys, is it more flattering that seemingly really no one has has kind of followed you. I, I haven't really seen a, a, a AAA, you know, game that first person shooter that's tried to do the kind of stuff that Doom did in 2016 and Eternal's building off of. So is it more flattering that that no one's tried or or would it be more flattering or more if concerning? You, yeah, or more <laughs> I'm not sure there. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like like Hugo said, it, it's uh it's hard to get in the minds of of other uh, other teams or other publishers. Um I don't know. I'm I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we found a formula that I think works. I, I think that's probably yeah. it. Yeah. And and knowing that um, knowing that we can stick to it and that it, that it is so unique. I mean, I, I think you know we, we say it often that you know it's we want people to look at a you know look at a screen um, whether it's this happens to have the logo uh, behind us, but uh, you know look at look at a game screen and, or a gameplay and just know that it's it, that. It's a it's a Doom game in this case, or that it's an ID game, um, because it it it's unique, and that's you know whether it's the demons or the the Slayer or the weapons, the chainsaw. You know, there's so many elements of Doom that just it, it'd be tough for another game to kind of get specifically in its lane, even even if somebody did do a shooter, yeah. um, you know, a first well, person shooter. I don't think they want to trend chase. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I I don't think we're the only group of developers and designers who understand that you have to be bold and you have to have to present uh, players with new experiences because if you're just kind of doing the same old then there's that familiarity and, and you're not going to have the kind of excitement uh, necessary to achieve uh, you know meet your sales expectations so probably they're just thinking the same thing we are yeah you know? <laughs> uh, that like we got to do what's best for us and go find the new uh, formula that, that attracts an audience and has people uh, excited. Well, a couple more questions before I let you go here. Um, you know, we're talking all about Doom and finding finding the exact sort of formula for Doom, but God, I got to ask while I'm sitting here at id Software with with Hugo and Marty, the <laughs> two of the top dogs of the studio, 
Uh, are there? Are you guys tossing around any ideas for for rebooting Quake? I mean, it you know, Quake's been okay. There's Quake Live, but it's Quake's been a little quiet for a while, and you know, I wonder if if that gets tossed around at all. Like, hmm, how could we how could we rethink this for for the you know new decade for so, the 2020s? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it, it 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 would be interesting. We've been so like, I mean, I can't tell you how like it takes so much work and so much effort to 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 make sure that we we haven't. We say, I say this in team meetings all the time. Keep your eye on the ball, you know. Using the sports analogy, uh, so we we really really try to to not get distracted by anything. Um, the uh, you know we've we've had Quake Champions out for a while. It's a really really good online uh, online game. If you like Quake 3 or Quake Live, Quake Champions is, is fantastic. Uh, adds adds some new elements to it. Um, so that that's kind of been our our Quake game for a while. But uh, the the kind of the, the development team here, it's just been all doom for the last you know seven years or so. And uh, and and honestly, as we look look ahead uh, even to the next year or two, uh, we've got so much that we still want to do uh, to support Doom Eternal. We're going to be doing one of the things we didn't do in 2016 was release DLC. We're gonna be doing DLC. We're gonna be doing free updates to give players uh, master levels, like new ways to play the game on on uh, uh, with with kind of a combat remix that's really fun. Um, tons of stuff to support battle mode and and really drive that. So we've got. I mean, we just literally yesterday in a meeting went through our our plans for the next year, and it is ridiculous. Like it's 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 so much stuff that. Uh, I think people are already starting to be like, oh, I don't know, can we like take that thing off? Or so we, we're we're kind of uh, neck deep in it already. And and uh, as far as anything next, we'll we'll kind of start start that process over the next couple of years, probably. So uh, finally, here. Uh, well, first, I want to take a moment to recognize the awesomeness of Hugo's shirt. Yes. Uh, if you can, if we can get, if you can show that clearly, <laughs> that is real good. That is a uh, that is a, a sure army of darkness doom properly, crossover. It is, this it is cool somebody enough. might get sued. Somebody yes. might, but it's <laughs> cool enough that probably not. So this is a good example of something that is appealing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Hugo, Marty. Thank you guys so much. Uh, doom Eternal is out March twentieth. Super stoked for it. Uh, we're covering it all month long here as part of IGN First. If you've missed any of our coverage, be sure to check in uh, on the on the site, on our YouTube channel. We're doing a lot, so uh, it's been really fun. Thank you guys so much for having us here at the studio. Thanks we for super appreciate down. it. Yeah, and uh, for more from the best, brightest, most interesting minds in the games industry, stay tuned every month for a new episode of IGN Unfiltered. I told you all to leave me here. I am where I belong.